I'm gonna get up in your face. But this week, we're gonna go through, I'm gonna share with you guys a bunch of stuff that I've learned around social enterprise, like setting them up and running them. I've been doing it for ages. Now Hira Communities is all about the people. In 2018, a group of us got together and we launched Te Hao Monaco, a space for the creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs of Monaco and Aotearoa. Me, Mal, Andy, Becky, Bari, Kippy, and the rest of the crew are on a mission to put our creativity on the map. Just a few. Should we we'll acknowledge how we little... met? Yeah, sure. Like Prince Harry. This is our journey. Back in 2011, I started working at Roscoe Youth Zone in Mount Roscoe. Shout out to the Wesley Roscoe crew. Have Prince Charles there in, um, this week, which is pretty mean. And um, we did heaps of stuff. Like I started off by doing like, yeah, the Rise Youth Crew. Uh, so we used to um, just simply like in the holidays, we'd take a bunch of the young people out uh, and teach them how to like mow lawns and cut hedges and clean windows and stuff and make some cash over the holidays. Um, shout out to our brother Rima who used to, was a key part of that who um, unfortunately passed away about a year ago. Um, and then we set up the um, Rise Up screen printing spot um, with Arthur and then we did the Rise Fit Gym um, and then we did the Ruskell Coffee Project which was a pretty mean um, cafe set up by Paul and Anna Fletcher and their mate Rowan um, from their side and I was running it from the council side um, and that was like a youth training cafe based in, in Ruskell which was it was pretty amazing while it, while it lasted uh, and then we like Within the youth centre before I moved on, I also got um, the boys from Critical, um, Andy and Rui at that stage, to come in and start doing some 3D printing stuff with the young people there and looking at how we could take like the plastic chairs that were the kids kept breaking and instead of throwing them out, how could we recycle them um, and put them through some of the 3D printing processes they were doing. So that was the first bit. In 2013, I cruised over to the UK and um, with some friends UK and Europe and as part of that trip I went and visited a bunch of like social enterprises in London because the UK is like killing it as far as social enterprise go they're way ahead of us um, I visited the social enterprise UK and this guy called Peter um, Holbrook over there uh, just to learn about what it was like to you know like to run social enterprises then after that I left um, Roscoe Youth Zone and I moved over into um, another part of Auckland Council um, and as part of that I um, started to really invest in and build a movement called the Peter Collective, Pukita Papa Education, Training and Employment Readiness, PETA. Um, and by facilitating and leading that group, um, we uh, went on for us to develop Mustard Seed, um, which was around supporting originally youth entrepreneurs and then supporting um, just grassroots or community entrepreneurs uh, to use entrepreneurship to develop themselves, but also to provide for their families as, as a viable option. From there, under Peter Collective, we started Pukitapa Papa Community Driving School, based on like a one-for-one one model so some people pay for driving lessons and then other people get to get it for free um, and that was all based around the fact that have, getting a driver's license and getting through the graduated driver's licensing system in Aotearoa is actually a privilege um, and there's so many other people that are missing out because they don't have the money, they don't have the car, they don't have someone to teach them how to drive, they end up getting fines and then they just keep going in the justice system, they're unsafe, then um, in that community there's heaps of migrants and refugees and getting a driver's license and being confident on the road is a key part of them settling into the country. Uh, so that kind of came in and that is cranking right now, pcds.co.nz. Uh, and then I moved on, well while we were doing that actually I started my own first social enterprise called Bob and Bob Creative with my best mate Mal who you guys know. Hi I'm Bob and I'm Bob. And we're from Bob and Bob Creative. We are a digital content agency based in Monaco, South Auckland. Um, and that was all around like 
using creativity to help tell the stories of impact. Stories of um, organisations that were making a social impact, cultural impact, environmental impact, tell their stories of impact in a meaningful way that would help them get funding, that would help them get their manager's approval, that would help them really show what they were doing. And at the same time, like supporting creatives in South Auckland um, by giving, getting them to work on jobs with us. That led us into Ngahere Communities, um, where we are right now, and we've got so much stuff going on. We've still got Mustard Seed. Mustard Seed and Bob and Bob have, have like clashed. We've smashed them together. So we're working with young entrepreneurs or up and coming entrepreneurs and creatives through the Mustard Seed Creator Studio. And in our head of communities, we're all about building, cultivating communities that enhance creativity and innovation using collaborative spaces, co-design programs and common values. Um, and so we run Te Hao Manako, which is a co-working space. We run a bunch of events, we run a whole bunch of programs for young people, for entrepreneurs, for creatives, all that sort of stuff. So um, impact and mission is very much what drives us, um, but our revenue comes through program delivery uh, and through the um, people hiring the spaces um, and then that helps us pay all of our utilities including the sublease that, that we carry as part of that project. So that's been my history in social enterprise along with that I've been to a bunch of conferences and workshops and been alongside some really amazing people. Um, so today I want to share a little bit about what we've learnt so far, some of the cool things. So that's like an eight year journey. Um, yeah, and I still feel like we've only just begun. Let's go for a walk, eh? Before the sun goes down. Life like this is what your life like Trying to live your life right People really know you push your buttons like type right This is like a movie but it's really very life like Every single Bunch of scouts like kicking it around fight, here right? I was looking at the gram and a dream Look at them uh, First tip around starting a social enterprise First of all, on starting a social enterprise, always find something that actually can make money. Look for revenue. Um, and I think quite often with social enterprise, people think the only way to do it is to make money through the impact that you're trying to make. It is one way to do it. But also, like one of the things that I learned when I went to Social Enterprise UK and speaking to Peter Holbrook, who's one of the um, globally one of the up there people as far as social enterprise goes, is he started his first social enterprise by using a building that was given to them by a bank, um, and he wanted to start um, something for young people. So he used the ground floor for a youth centre and a radio station, um, but he used the rest of the building and leased it out um, and used the money from that lease. Uh, to help fund what he was doing on the ground floor with the young people so always look for something that can make revenue anywhere anywhere in the world like what is good for business go with that and when you have your idea go and validate it get someone or find a process or a system that can help you prove that it's actually going to make you some money don't just go on your hunch and your assumption and what you like get some real advice um, do some customer validation stuff some stuff that we've used is um, oh, I forget what it's called now but I'll link it in here there's heaps and heaps of awesome tools out there and using like a social lean canvas um, to actually like put everything down and look at what the cost structures are going to be like um, is really super important. So uh, find something that's going to make you money and then validate that it's actually going to make you money and do a bit of a forecast and see uh, is this thing actually needed? Are there customers out there that are willing to pay for it? How do you know? Like prove it, go talk to them. What are they willing to pay for it? Is there room in the market or are too many people doing it? And then you can go from there. There's people coming so I'm going to stop. My dad he told me it ain't crazy like I was screaming at the referee just like Mike looking for a bright light Sigo what's your life like riding on a white bike feeling like excite bike pressing on the gas I mean how stunning is this? Tip number two <sighs> Nah who am I kidding? Why is this the top? Like if Tyler Perry made a move if a BT Searching for a deity Now you wanna see it free Now you wanna see it Tip number two Look for partnerships Like if you wanna make a real impact And make some cash you're probably not going to be able to do it on your own. And nearly everything that I've done, every single like initiative, we always made sure that we had good partners on board. Uh, and so this one with Ngā Hira Communities, uh, most people know we went into partnership with uh, Auckland Council and within Auckland Council three departments, uh, the Southern Initiative, um, ATED, Auckland Tourism Events, Economic Development and Panaku Development. Um, and though it's not easy, 
uh, managing some big partnerships like this is actually worth it. Um, and I know like almost uh, say 16 months into it that we really really need them and there's no way we can uh, like impact at the scale um, and operate it at, at like what we want to do without having those guys on board and now everything that we do with Whingahiri we're always 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 looking for partnerships so check out partnerships and see who you can partner with to um, achieve your goal and be willing to share yeah it's a key to partnership you got to get over the fact that you want to do it on your own Tip number three is like you gotta have some skin in the game. I really believe for you to be truly successful, you've gotta like, you've gotta get in there, you've gotta either invest money, uh, you gotta put yourself on the line. Um, you've gotta really believe in it. Um, and when you put something of yourself in there, especially if it's money, um, it helps you be more motivated and helps you like chase after and be real gritty which is what you need to be as an entrepreneur um, but also it tells your partners that you're here to play um, and it gives you sway like for us with Auckland Council and and all of that the fact that we brought with us a hundred thousand dollars into the investment into Hao Monaco it meant that we have more like like they can't push us around as much. Um, we have a say, we have a stake, we have skin in the game, um, and it drives us even further. So how did we get 100,000K? Well, yeah, 100K wasn't easy. Um, we actually wanted 120, but we fell short by 20K. There were two ways that we got it. Um, one, we got a business loan through Māori Women's Development Inc. So any wahine Māori or um, partners of Māori women that are in business and want to get a loan like it's a small loan but it's enough to get you started have a look at my Māori Women's Development Inc. MWDI they give really beautiful terms five five year loans five percent interest um, for Māori women so we got in on that and then the second thing we did is we did a crowdfunding campaign now crowdfunding is awesome um, it's hard work um, but if you're willing to put in the mahi you definitely get the treats but we did it through Takoha, which was um, on Pledge Me, and we were fortunate enough to be the very first to go through Takoha, and through that we raised forty thousand uh, dollars. Crowdfunding's mean because it makes you build your crowd, it makes you like get the word out there. Uh, it's encouraging because people jump in behind you and help you with your um, project, and it's a really cool way to get money, and you don't owe anyone at the end of it. Uh, but it is hard work, hard, 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 hard work. But we raised forty thousand dollars through that. We're fifty thousand dollar loan, and a couple of us in the crew put some cash in as well. So that made up our hundred grand, and that was our initial investment to finish the fit out of Te Hao Manako and start paying our staff members and start paying the bills because they started rolling in as soon as we signed the contract. Uh, have some skin in the game, because because of that, I'm never going to die. I'm never going to let it go. Cut it. Oh, I can see the beautiful sunset over there. Let me just film it. Oh, there it goes. Next tip, uh, what are we up to? Maybe number five? So tip number five is make it safe for yourself. Uh, you are more than likely not going to be an expert at everything you need to be an expert at so get some experts around you uh, in my situation I got um, someone who's really good at finances someone who's really good at governance and structures um, and then I had friends who were really good at supporting me um, I talked to someone who was um, in education Andy um, and programming uh, and I bounced off people that um, I feel like could vibe with what we were doing. I reached out to Rebecca Hollis who had done co-working spaces before. Um, so get some advice and talk to people and see if you can get them on board with your vision. Um, a few of the people like Andy ended up working for us. Um, Barry, our financial guy, is uh, directing the company. Kippy who's really supported through um, not-for-profit governance structures and um, business models and systems analysis and stuff 
stuff like that. He um, acts as an independent advisor with us. So reach out to some of those people and get them around you and make your concept and your ideas safe. Yeah, get an accountant if you're not good at that. Get a lawyer if you need advice. Um, it's worth it in the long run. It really is. Especially if you're going big and you're putting skin in the game. Don't waste it. Clean us up the rain is spring. Take the chlorine. And then probably my final tip would be, um, what would my final tip be? And my final tip would be to get in there um, and learn as you go. Like be okay with the fact that, man there's cotton candy clouds, I can't get over it, I can't focus. Be okay with the fact that you might not get it right the first time or the second time or the third time. You're probably going to fail a bit, but it's in that failing and being able to fail really quickly that you'll learn real fast and I think credit to our team what we've been able to achieve in one year 14 months of operation and what we've learned in one year is because our team has just jumped in there and I've always said it to them I would rather you try and fail than do nothing at all because you're paralyzed because it's in the trying and the failing and the movement that you build momentum you build confidence you have um, you actually know what's working versus what's not working you're not just guessing all the time um, and you can respond to the way that people uh, respond to you what you're doing your services your business and stuff like that so get moving definitely this could be weird but uh, there's a bunch of things that you shouldn't do as well things like uh, listening to too many people's advice so many people will want to give you advice um, and if you don't trust them to speak into your life and they don't have any like real standing in social enterprise or the business world honestly don't take it too heavy uh, lots of people will give it to you choose which ones you want and throw the rest away yeah trust your gut trust yourself you got this also like don't be afraid to get started just start like I said before uh, you're not gonna get it right anyway the first time you're gonna fail multiple times so just get going get started right now honestly my biggest encouragement to you don't do nothing don't be paralyzed <laughs> that's not right over my face Don't throw your money away. Do your research, do your homework. Um, try not to be wasteful. Be clever. Kaitiaki. Guard what you have and the mission that you have. Yeah. Saturday night, blueberry cigarettes. Swishes me, my throat hurt. Rolling on CBs on the side for me. Light them up and let them both oh, Found it to you, St. Mom's confused. <laughs> Well, Fano, that's it from me for tonight. Uh, it's getting pretty dark, so I gotta get down. Oh, I found a bug. Bug. Anyway. Uh, that's it from Mangere Maunga, uh, that's our top tips around, um, my top tips in your own social enterprise, happy as to talk to anyone if you guys want a bit more um, information, you want someone to jam with or whatever, just hit me up, uh, check out our podcast too, we're doing some cool stuff on podcasts talking about all sorts of things, uh, Ngahiri Talks on Spotify, Apple, Google, whatevs, alright, back to the office now, enjoy the view. Don't care like I do, nowhere like I do. And all the things that I do. Okay, so questions. Question time. We've had a few questions come in via um, message, Insta, and then I chatted to a few people as well. And I've also pulled out a couple of things that people have said. But I'm trying to keep this fast and quick so that it doesn't go on for too long. And Tori might answer some for you too, eh, Tors? Hey tours! Funding as in like um, grant funding or not-for-profit funding um, and building a model that's dependent on funding is never considered a good long-term option um, and I 100% agree with that you want to get to a point where you're standing on your own two feet especially with social enterprise but funding is a really really good short-term option um, 
and being able to find seed funding through grants um, is I think really really clever. One of the things we did in setting up the Puketapapa Community Driving School um, is we used $10,000 from the local board to develop a, a really solid business case that was a full co-design process with the whole community um, and we managed to use that business case to secure 120k from another funder to actually set the driving school up even though the school had an uh, revenue model alongside an impact model so yeah still don't um, have a bad relationship with funding in any way um, but just be clever with how you use it because it's um, it's not going to last forever. Come over here Tools. If people wanted to start up a social enterprise what kind of structures could they use? <laughs> oh yeah um, I don't know. Okay what what qualifies a social enterprise? <laughs> How do you this get money? <laughs> How do you get money to set up a social enterprise? Just save up. <laughs> get a piggy bank. That's a great <laughs> one. Just save up, bro. If you're a social enterprise, should you give freebies all the time? No. Yeah. See, that's a good answer. Why not? I think it's just a good general rule. Don't give out free stuff. It's got to be like a bit of give and take. Yeah. Awesome, okay, we can go now, I'll answer them for real. <laughs> uh, structures is one of the most common questions. In New Zealand it's still pretty limited, so you can set up a trust or an incorporated society, or you could be a limited liability company. Um, and you can be for profit or you can get a charitable status as a company, um, which means that all of your profit goes back into your mission and your purpose. Um, so there's no real like social enterprise, so impact and profit model in New Zealand at this stage. Um, and I think recently there was a big report on that about the state of like legal structures in New Zealand and also what can be done to change it um, to help inform some legislation. Yeah, uh, we are a limited liability company because we actually want to be for profit. And we're in the process of setting up a trust so that we can access um, philanthropic funding for the impact side of what we do. So we'll end up having two entities. Are we funded by council? So quite a few people assume that Ngahere Communities is fully funded by Auckland Council, when in fact we are zero funded by Auckland Council. Te Hao Manuko is invested into by council, um, but as a social enterprise, we're not funded at all. And as you would have heard earlier on, we actually had to bring money with us um, and we pay a lease to Auckland Council for this space. Not the full lease, it is a subsidised lease but we pay a lease nonetheless. Um, and yeah so we do operate the space and we use what um, we make out of the space to help pay for all of those expenses but it actually doesn't even cover it, it's not even close to covering the expense of the lease and the space and the utilities and the staff required and the marketing and all of that. Um, the partnership, what the partnership does look like is um, Auckland Council have taken a lease out on the space. They, they subsidise the lease and we take on each month, we take on more and more of those payments. Um, and then Council kind of advocate for other uh, government departments to invest in the whole ecosystem that we're trying to build around Te Hao Manukau. So that might look like funding for programs. Um, it's mainly what it looks like actually. Um, so, so council do do a bit of that, TSO do a bit of that, looking for different um, opportunities to bring cash into the overall purpose of what, what happens. And we do receive some of that cash, but it is in the form of a contract delivery. So we still have to output on top of running the space we have to output um, quality programs to fulfil those, yeah, those expectations. So no contrary to popular belief, we are not council funded. Uh, Te Hao Monaco as a project is, but Ngahiri Communities is not. We are a partner that invests into Te Hao. One question was why consider doing a social enterprise? Um, I think if you want to do more than just make an impact, and you want to do more than just make money, social enterprise can help you do both. Um, for me, it's always been about people 
everything that I do has been about people achieving their potential. Um, so when I look at like the way that I want to live and making my own money, I can't separate that from wanting to help other people. So I've naturally gone into the social enterprise side because I am entrepreneurial and I hate being told what to do. I want to run my own stuff, but because I have a heart for people, I want to run stuff that makes a difference. So that's why I choose social enterprise. Um, yeah, it helps you really put meaning into, into what you're doing. Um, you don't have to just sit there asking for a handout all the time, but you can grow um, something that's really meaningful. You can develop products that people can engage in, and so you can build a movement of people that want to invest in your cause and your mission. Um, so it's a real cool way to, to look at solving some of the big problems that our people face. What qualifies a social enterprise? That is a good question, actually. I'll put a little, a little thing right here. There's like a spectrum, I think they call it, of, of what social enterprise means. And so you can go from one end where you're a full-on corporate business and you put a little bit of your funding into making a difference, like corporate social responsibility, all the way through to the other end where you run a program or you run initiatives to help make a difference, um, but you try and make a little bit of money off that. So kind of corporates doing social stuff, um, not-for-profits doing business stuff and right in the middle is where you get the best of both worlds so a business model that's focused around making a difference and you can sit anywhere along that spectrum yeah all right that's it for this week thanks so much for tuning in um, next week I don't even know what's going to be on next week we'll figure out something if you got any ideas let us know but that is episode seven three more left in our first season of Ngahiri Weekly. Can't believe it's gone this quickly. See you next week. I don't cry,